Wow, here we are again, Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Let's take a look in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 13, and uh, verse 15. It's through Him. Let's stop right there for a second. When you say Him, you're talking about Jesus Christ. And He needs a pause. When you say that, through Him, Jesus Christ, when you say that, you need to pause a second. And then let us continually offer up sacrifice of praise to God. That means the songs that come out of your heart, that are in your heart and on your lips, should be songs of God. Should be praise songs. Should be songs that are praising the Lord. This day and age, we have so much music that came from beneath the place called hell. And it's being played uh, throughout. I pulled up beside a vehicle yesterday. The man had all his windows closed. And I couldn't help but hear very clearly what was on his machine. The whole car was rock and booming. And all of the hellish words that were coming from the man singing. And the guy's carrying on and going crazy. The devil is here today. He has come up from beneath. He is showing himself. We need to be careful and stay away from that. Verse chapter 5 in 13. Uh, chapter 13 of Hebrews. Let your conversation be without controversy or, or covetousness. And he uh, be uh, content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. What are you saying, Brother Peter? I'm saying the scripture says, if you're living under a bridge pushing a buggy and picking up things all day and finding something to eat, you need to be content with Jesus Christ if he's in your heart and you're living. You can be just as content in that situation as a man working five to seven days a week and bringing home a payday. As a matter of fact, I have met in Atlanta, Georgia, when I used to go up there every day to an auction, and I talked with those people pushing the buggies, and I gave them a dollar or two, and something, maybe an apple or something I had in the car, and uh, I found Christian people pushing buggies. I found people that were, that they had become that way of their life as far as living goes, but they were not discontent. They were not unhappy. They were happy with them with their life, even though it was the life it was. And uh, I, matter of fact, I think maybe I found more happier people pushing a buggy living under a bridge than I have found driving a Cadillac and living in a house. And uh, so that we may boldly, boldly say, "The Lord is my helper." And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Because the Lord is their helper. The Lord is our helper. We don't have to fear what man can do unto us. Verse 7 says, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, uh, considering the end, of their conversation. He's talking about if you have a preacher, if you have a man, a woman, or somebody who's been speaking to you about Jesus, who's been teaching you, remember them. They, if they have a need, fill that need if you can. And that's what he's saying. And he's also saying by being obedient, to what they say in their guidelines and they're guiding you, be obedient to that. 
and you will bless them. And they will have great reward in heaven because you have done that. Do you know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday as he is today? You ask him into your heart today, he's there tomorrow. He'll always be there once you get him in your heart. Once you confess you are a sinner. Jesus, I am a sinner. You know, if you're watching this and you're a religious person and you're watching this, then religion and Christianity are two different things. You can be religious in anything you do. That means your steward is in it. But not be a Christian. A Christian is one who becomes Christ-alike. He said, Be not carried about and driven away by strange doctrine. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Not with meats, which have not profited from them that have been occupied therein. Uh, it's not living sumptuously that gets you through to heaven. It's living under God. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve in the tabernacle. Uh, I was reading in Hebrews in the Old Testament and the New Testament, but reading about those were days that were a little different in some things. But he's saying, you can be a worker in the tabernacle and not be a partaker of it. So what happened? You got in, but you didn't get in the right way. You came in to be a worker or you came into a church, and you're in a church. And you're a worker in that church. But you have never said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. He's saying you're in there now by works. And works will not get you to heaven. The only thing that will get you to heaven is by confession that you are a sinner. And that you need to be saved. That's the only thing that will get you in the good graces of God. He's saying that's the only way you can get in. Let's look at another verse. Let's go uh, to Revelations. And that's the last book in the New Testament. Revelation. And let's take a look in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. And this is the beginning. Jesus is talking here. John's saying it, but it's Jesus talking. And we're going to look 1 and 8. Uh, my fingers are, are not just shaky, they're a little old. Jesus speaking himself. And this is what he says. I am Alpha. That is the A of the alphabet. And Omega. That is the Z of the alphabet. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus said, I came to a virgin birth to tell you the truth. If you will accept me, I will give you eternal life. And if you do not accept me, you will be damned into hell by your own self because you rejected me. He is not casting us into hell. We are casting ourselves into hell by unbelief. Why am I not catching fish today? Because I'm not fishing. That's how clear salvation is. If you're headed to hell today, it's because you haven't asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin. Come in your heart and save your soul. That's how clear that is. Because he said, he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. And who 
and who is come. He is the Almighty. The who is the one that was with God. And now he has come. He is the Almighty. And he will come again. And when he appears, if you are saved, you will be like him. And he's going to take all that are like him to heaven with him. He's going to take all that are like him. How do you get like him? By asking him to forgive you of your sin. And, and when you do, you are the same as he. You know that Jesus is the beloved of the Father. He is the head of the host of heaven. And when you accept him, you get what he's got. And you will be able to go there by grace. Let's go back up to the little book of Ephesians. And look at in Ephesians uh, chapter 1 and verse 6. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6. 1 and 6 says, To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the beloved he is the beloved Jesus is the beloved he has accepted us all the way back in the book of Matthew uh, and, and we're going to go back there for a second Matthew chapter 3 and verse 7 Matthew Mark Luke John that's, Matthew is the first one all the way back to chapter 3 and verse 7 <coughs> wow picked up some dust and chapter 3 and verse 7 but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to him his baptism he said unto them O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He knew that they were not saved. They had not asked him to forgive them of the sin. And he would not baptize them. Because they were vipers. They were lost. They came as lost people and just wanted to be baptized by his baptism. And they could not receive the Holy Spirit because they rejected the Holy Spirit. Because when he came, they put him on the cross. So, let's go and see him as the counselor. Well, we got to go back into the Old Testament. To the book called Isaiah in the Old Testament. You say, Brother Peter, Jesus came in the New Testament. He sure did. But he's prophesied in every single book in the Old Testament. And we're going back to the Old Testament, to the book of Isaiah. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, uh, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles, uh, Ezra, uh, Nehemiah, Psalms, and then I think we're going to come to Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, Isaiah. We're going to look in Isaiah chapter 7 and uh, verse 14. Isaiah 7 and 14. And he says in Isaiah 7 and 14, he says, Therefore, wow, I love it. That is a great word when you find it in the Bible. A look where it came from. That's what it's talking about. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall his name shall be called Emmanuel. Wow. That is Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 7, and verse 14, he is prophesied to come. And he is the only way 
a man can go to heaven th is through him that son Jesus Christ and that's the only way you will go to heaven and be in the host of the Lord and be in his counsel the one who was wonderful the one whose wisdom was the wisdom of God walking on the earth all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge were in him and when you get him in your heart and you open up his Bible, his book you have the book of all the wisdom and all the knowledge that you need to live a Christian life in this world today wow and that's from the uh, counselor now the deliverer well, we're going back well while we're right here in the Old Testament uh, no we're not in the Old Testament let's back up <laughs> to the Old Testament for a minute and look in the book of Psalms now Psalms was written by the authorship of Jesus he's the one that's sitting with the Father and he's the one authorizing the book of Psalms <clears throat> and so let's look at Psalm 18 back up to Psalm 18 I'm all the way over in 53 let's, let's go forward to 18 now I'm back at 1 uh, at, at 18 and verse 2 Psalm 18 verse 2 the Lord is my rock David speaking here wow the Lord is my rock and here I am a few thousand years later he is my fortress he's mine too he's the one that keeps me he is the fortress and the fort I live in he is my deliverer and he is daily he delivers me from Satan's clutches he is my God he is the one I worship he's the one I believe in he's the one that gives me sleep at night he's the one that gives me peace during the day he is my strength in whom I will trust man I can trust him I can trust him morning noon and night seven days a week 365 days a year and I'm 78 and I can trust him every day of my life wow and he is my buckler wow that means I'm buckled up to him and what he he allows I can do and what he doesn't allow I'm not supposed to do and uh, he and he is the horn of my salvation in the Old Testament days when you spoke of a horn you spoke of something that was that meant something in the days of the Old Testament in the camps that people were in there were certain sounds that the horn gave there was a warning sound when that blew everybody stood up and paid attention and this is what the Bible is the horn of our salvation when we read it and take it it's like a horn blowing in our heart and giving us this salvation and he is my high tower I am standing there right now if you please I am on the high tower of God I'm in his book I'm reading his blowing of the horn and he has me in a high tower I am a foot above the water if you please I'm a foot above the drowning stage and he has brought me there through his salvation all the way back over to where we were just a little bit ago we were in the book of Hebrews and in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament verifies that what I'm saying here now uh, we were in uh, Hebrews let me see let me go back to where we are now where we are where we are where we are 
we were we were in Psalms, okay. We were in Psalm 18 and 2. And now we're going to go uh, to the book of Hebrews and read. I lost my, my, my train of thought for a second. He is my deliverer. He is my salvation. We're going over to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 13. I'm studying and reading here out of a reference Bible. A mini reference Bible. And uh, we're going to go uh, to chapter 2. And uh, let me go back and get my references proper and correct. And verse 13. And verse 13. And again, I love it. When he says something, when the Bible says, and again, that means it was said before. Now he's repeating it over here in the New Testament. I read it over there in Psalms, remember? Now he's repeating it again. I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. What a statement. What a statement. That verse right there should touch your heart. What is he saying? I and the children which he hath given me. He's saying those that have come with him, those that are there with him, in heaven, those that are there, that he has given me, I will put my trust in him again. Behold, I and the children which he had given me, man. What we have to look forward to is amazing. It, it's more than amazing. Uh, he is Emmanuel. What is Emmanuel? He is called Emmanuel. He, that is God with us. When he's called Emmanuel, he is God with us. He that has seen you has seen the Father. So, Emmanuel has come. He's talked with us. He has seen us. And he is with the Father. Let's, let's look in the book of John, chapter 14, right here. And uh, verse 7. Chapter 14 and verse 7. And see what he says. This is Jesus speaking now. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I'm here in representation of the Father. I come from his bosom. And and he he was he birthed me by a a woman, a, a natural woman on this earth, he birthed me by putting his seed in her that I would be born as a man. Yet I'm as a man, I am of the Father. I am his son. I am his representative. And I have come to tell you I am going to go to the cross and I'm going to give up the spirit of a man on this earth and go back with my Father from whence I came. And I'll be with him and he will be with me forever. We will be with each other on the thrones in heaven. And I will and can come into your heart by the Spirit. If you'll say, Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. I will. And when I do, you will be in me and I will be in you. And you can come and be with me forever when you lay your body down. Because your body is only a temporary dwelling place 
for the soul. And the soul and the spirit are the two things going to go to heaven. But we will receive a bodily form in heaven. The Bible said we'll be known in heaven as we're known on the earth. That's the spiritual side of us. But he is going to give us a body there. Wow. Uh, he is the faithful one. And uh, from John, uh, and, and to go into the New Testament and look at uh, uh, some other verses, we'll have to go go further. That's not what you want to act from. And do you know it's amazing that you can know all the books of the Bible and you can know them in sequence? And when you get on here and you get to preaching or talking, you uh, have a, a, a hard time sometimes to go to them. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 20. Let's go there and see what it says. 5 and 20. It says, Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. He's saying, if you believe God's saying something to you, prove it. And hold fast to it. So we are to prove that which we read and get in the Bible. And then we're to hold fast to it. Wow. Our time has come and gone. My challenge to you today is to get in your Bible daily. Get your Bible and open it up and put it on somewhere where you can read it every day. I like carrying, I carry one in my seat of my car always. One right there in the seat of my car, always. I used to carry one in my back pocket. I carried it for years and years and years. And it was one almost this size right here. And I sat on it for years, driving and working and whatever I did. And it caused me, it was nothing to do with it being the Bible that caused it. But I have a sciatica problem. I have a leg that's a killer. I can't hardly live with it because I caused a problem by carrying, sitting on that for years. And it changed my uh, muscle area and my, my uh, sciatica. So, anyway, but I read it daily. I used it daily. I preached it daily. I taught it daily. And I lived it daily. And I, I put it in my brain. I put it in my heart daily. And this is what we're supposed to do with God's Word. We're supposed to hide it in our heart. Why? So that we won't sin against Him. In uh, uh, Luke uh, chapter 11, verse, chapter 11, verse 11, if a son, and I'm a son of God, ask bread of any of you that is a father, he will give him, would you give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will you give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father give the Holy Spirit to them which ask him? If you ask Jesus to come into your heart and save your soul, he'll put the Holy Spirit in your heart. And you will have the Holy Spirit in your heart from now on. And that was Jesus speaking in chapter 11 of the book of Luke. So he's saying, I'm not going to give you a serpent or a scorpion. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. If you ask my Father and ask me, Dear God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. He will put the Holy Spirit. He gave it to me. 3 o'clock in the morning, November 5th, 
1972, and it has never, ever failed, not one second. We'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.